The World Health Organization declared the coronavirus a global pandemic exactly one year ago today. Can you believe it? One year ago. Now, look at this photo. It was taken that afternoon in our broadcast center shortly before we evacuated. the. Look at all the people. Shortly yes. before we evacuated the building. One year later, many of us still have not returned to the building. Look at this. You can see personal items are still there just as people left them as they had to leave the building. Right. It's still kind of spooky it in this is. building. Yeah. yeah it's, it's sad to me. To I'm going to turn off one of those TVs, though. I, don't, <laughs> I, think, I think it's time after one year of airing. That's sad. It is sad. In the rest of the country, the gravity of the situation had set in. We checked in with Dr. Helen Chu, an infectious disease researcher who found a way to test for COVID early on. Admiral Brett Giroir, the former assistant secretary of health, who was put in charge of COVID testing, and David Latt, one of the first COVID patients hospitalized in New York City. A warning, this piece does contain some upsetting images. CBS News has two known cases of coronavirus, so we have closed our New York broadcast center. We knew at the end of February and certainly at the beginning of March that we had to prepare for an unprecedented onslaught on the hospital system, the medical care system with a previously unknown virus with unknown transmission patterns. We were hoping that it would not become like 1918, but it was becoming more and more evident that there was very rapid person-to-person -person transmission and that the death rates were very high. It was really scary being an early patient. I think I was one of the first 1,000 in New York State. We didn't know what we know now about how to treat COVID. The doctors were just trying to figure it out as they were treating me. I was on a ventilator for almost a week, and there were points where it wasn't clear that I was going to make it. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. When the president declared a national emergency, it certainly put in an exclamation point that people understood the seriousness. Never has there been a virus that one person could not even get sick with and have no symptoms, and then the person right next to them could be dead within a few days. And I just kept thinking, I, 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 I don't, I don't want to go. I'm married. I have a husband. We have a three-year-old son. I wasn't, I wasn't ready to go. Probably the worst moment was when I took over testing on March 12th and on March 13th understood that there were nothing in the stockpile. There was no infrastructure and uh, we needed to build that from scratch in a very rapid fashion. We're hearing from emergency room staff who say they will soon run out of supplies. During those early months when we had shortage of PPE, it was a very difficult time. We didn't do what needed to be done to increase manufacturing of those products. And then also the shortage of the swabs, the tubes, all the things that we use in the lab to be able to diagnose coronavirus. And it was like a gut punch. If we would run those 41 sites at full speed for testing, we would exhaust 80% of the entire PPE stockpile within the first three weeks. Ford Motor Company has just announced it will produce ventilators to help overcome critical supply shortages. And they were saying, oh, things are looking good. Maybe we're going to take David off the ventilator. And Zach, my husband, just wanted to make sure that if for some reason I needed to go back on, would there be a ventilator or would they have given it away to somebody else? We were prepared for small outbreaks, but we were not prepared for an unprecedented global outbreak of a respiratory contagious virus. 100,000 deaths, our coronavirus toll reaches a terrible mark. When we passed the 100,000 mark, so I think we, we really had lost hope at that point that we were going to come out of that. I think knowing what I know now, the number of deaths that could have been prevented is substantial. We were really trying to look over the horizon where we're going to go, how do we prevent the next 100,000 deaths, what did we need to do. We cannot test our way out of this or any other pandemic. I think there were many times where it was hard for Americans. One of the main things was the clear inequity in healthcare delivery and the disproportionate numbers of deaths in black and brown communities. And I think it revealed a lot of the things that were already there and magnified them. Health disparities have always existed for the African-American community. 
But here again, with the crisis, how it's shining a bright light on how it's unacceptable that is. We really have a sick care system. We don't have a health care system, and we need to fix it now. And I think we did make strides towards moving towards a public health system. One thing I think we did learn, to be optimistic, is we did come together in many ways. All of the support for healthcare workers. I remember being in New York and hearing the cheers. One of the clear positive things about this pandemic was how quickly scientists came together to develop a vaccine. I think that, to me, was a clear sign of people being very open and collaborative and being willing to all work together to do something that was important for the nation and the world as a whole. Brought back a lot of painful memories. Yeah. I never thought that we would still be sitting here talking about this a year later. No. You thought summer falls certainly by Christmas that we would all be out of it, and here we are. And as far as we've come here in New York, yes. because those first three months were so bad yes. in this city, I, I mean, just seeing them again, it mm. comes back so fast. Mm. It's kind of scary. And you know what? We're not out of it yet. No. no we haven't been back in that newsroom. Most people haven't nope. been back to their, That's right. their normal. It's still over there. It was lives. tough to look at that. You see us on the air every day, but we are a skeleton crew. So many people are still not in the building. building. It's just yeah. us chickens I, in this room. I, I don't think but, I've fully processed it yet. No, me too. No, I, that's, I what I, too. that's what I noticed in watching this yes. was, was I, haven't, I haven't really gotten through but it. But the good news is I like how she left it on a hopeful note. There is a vaccine. We've got three choices, and the sooner we get through that, the better off we'll all be. You've got to get shots.